I thought it would be a good idea to give a quick tour of the solar system. So for that we're going to talk about the different planets, as well as some things about asteroids and comets. But I think before we talk about those, it's important to understand a bit about orbits. Now I have a whole set of videos where I talk about orbits in a lot more detail and talk about things like Kepler's laws. Uh, but we're going to talk about just the basics right here. So let's just say that the planets, um, the planets have elliptical orbits. And when I say elliptical, I mean that's a, that's a funny shape. Now this is something that's um, elliptical. It seems I can't write today. Planets have elliptical orbits around the sun. Now, what does that mean? Uh, let's see, maybe I'll just draw the sun here, and I'll just do it like this right here, call it sun. Now, it doesn't matter what the planet is, maybe the planet's here. It'll have some sort of orbit like this right here. So something where, and maybe this right here is like the Earth, for example. Do you notice, I mean, it's not supposed to look like a circle. It's supposed to look like some sort of oval shape, or some people say like an egg shape. But in mathematics, we have a whole type of shape, and it's called an ellipse. And so if something is shaped like an ellipse, we say it's elliptical. Now, it turns out within the mathematics, there's some neat things. For example, a part of Kepler's laws, uh, that's uh, someone named Johannes Kepler. He wrote down, well, many other things, but among uh, his genius was to figure out these three Kepler's laws, as they're now known. And one of them talks about how orbits are elliptical. And in fact, the object that it's orbiting is at what we call a um, focus. So um, this right here, for example, it's at a special point right here. Turns out his other things about Kepler's laws talked about how um, there's equal area swept out in equal time and something about how the period and the radius are related. In other words, how long it takes to go around and how far away you are. But the main thing here I wanted to just stress is that planets have elliptical orbits around the sun. And in fact, um, moons also have elliptical orbits. So when I say, well, in fact, just about everything that orbits has elliptical orbits. So satellites around the Earth. So when we talk about the Earth, for example, um, we have something that goes around our Earth. It's called the moon. And so around our Earth, there's one thing orbiting called the moon, so we call it the moon. But of course, other planets have other moons. And they also have elliptical orbits around that planet. And in fact, if you have satellites, for example, so we can you know, launch things up into space now and things are actually going around the Earth, those orbits are also elliptical. Okay, so that's really important, I think, to understand a little bit about those. And I actually have a little web page here. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome web page. It's called PHET. It's done by the University of Colorado. They have amazing um, and very simple looking animations. And here's one of them. So here we can have, you know, uh, different bodies. So here's the sun and here is some sort of planet. And so sun and planet, we can say start. And watch carefully how the planet goes around the sun. Now it's hard to see that it's in lips, but it actually is. It's not a pure circle. What I also want to show, out, show is this. Most people don't quite get it that the sun also moves. So the sun itself also moves around. So it's not just like the sun stays still while we go around it. In fact, we both technically orbit each other about a center of mass, which is sort of right here. Now, of course, the sun is much more massive. That's why it totally wins in that it doesn't move around much, not compared to the planet. Of course, we can do lots of different things here. I think it's pretty fun. We can do sun, planet, and moon. So here we can see this, for example, could be the Earth, and this here could be the moon going around the Earth. So that's kind of fun to see. And we can have, let's see, um, well, I think actually what would be nice to show you is ellipses. Of course, you can have fun with these ones, but here's a nice animation showing really what ellipses look like. So these are three different stable elliptical orbits here. So this little blue one, for example, I think it really looks like an oval, right? It looks like an ellipse. And it turns out the sun then is right in the center. Look at this green one too. It's also an ellipse. All three of these are ellipses. So of course, uh, in mathematics, we can talk about how sharp these things are. We call that ellipticity. And in orbital mechanics, lots of different things can be uh, written for orbits. But one of the sort of orbital elements is this feature, how elliptical it is. 
Of course, there's all sorts of other things like where it starts and when it starts and all sorts of other stuff. But what I want to show you is just enough to understand that orbits are elliptical and the fact that moons also have elliptical orbits. And um, now, of course, other planets have moons as well. So maybe now that I mentioned the planets, let's maybe mention them here. So we've got lots of different planets now. We've got, um, there's a mnemonic here to help some people to remember what happens here or which of the planets are in order. So it goes like this, M, V, E, M, J, S, N, whoops, I did it wrong even. And this right here is a U and an N. And technically there should be a P here. Now this right here, uh, the way I learned it was my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. Now that's a really stupid mnemonic, I think, but it did help me to remember the different planets. So that's because uh, the very first one right here, the closest to the sun, um, is Mercury. So that's the closest to the sun. After that we have Venus. After that we have Earth. That's where we live. And after that is Mars. Now these three right here are actually called the terrestrial. That's what they're often known as, you know, sort of Earth-like. In other words, they're sort of rocky. Uh, so we call them terrestrial because it has something similar to Earth. So that's Terra. Now if we talk about uh, the next ones then, this could be Jupiter. We have Saturn. And this one right here, a lot of scientists insist on calling it Uranus, but come on, it's Uranus. So, of course, you can say lots of funny jokes about that one. Uh, you know, hey, I can see Uranus from here. <laughs> but, um, yes, it really has a funny name. And then we have Neptune and then Pluto. Those are the planets as far as we knew. Now, um, these next ones right here, let's maybe put them like this right here. These next ones right here are actually called the gas giants from here to here. Okay, those are the gas giants. So these are smaller planets, these are larger planets. And of course this is, you know, the Sun. So Sun is sort of in the center and then we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune as far as we go out. Now why don't I count Pluto anymore? We're going to get to that, but it turns out it's no longer considered a real planet. So I guess that mnemonic, my very educated mother just served us uh, nothing, I guess? I don't know. I mean, that mnemonic is going to have to change if you don't have the P there. Um, so maybe, uh, well, as far as these terrestrial planets go, we're going to do a little tour of these ones right here, but I quickly wanted to mention what's sort of in between here. So in between Mars and Jupiter, we have what's called the asteroid belt. So that's where we find lots of these rocky asteroids. So that's between Mars and Jupiter. And then it turns out we also have something special. Uh, past Neptune, we actually have, um, well, an area called the uh, Kuiper Belt. So that's actually somewhere where we find comets and things like that. So Kuiper Belt is where we find comets, plus lots of other things. So there's lots of other stuff there. In fact, there's also something possibly called the Oort Cloud that's even further away. Now this is obviously hard to tell how far things are, but this is sort of where things lay for now. Now why don't we consider Pluto a planet? There's lots of reason and there was a heated debate about it, but it turns out in 2006 they had to decide, and when I mean they, there's a consortium of scientists and they, have, they were trying to decide the definitions of a planet. Now of course that's a very arbitrary word. What is a planet? How do we decide that? Oh, it's something like the Earth. Uh, not quite. Now, of course, when they were trying to decide this, they figured out, okay, well, why isn't Pluto counted? Well, it turns out that its orbit is very tipped um, and has a certain size. And if you considered Pluto, then you had to consider tons of other ones because they started detecting other objects that were sort of Pluto-like. And there were lots and lots of them. So the problem was, do you have to add all of them to the planets or do you take away Pluto? So it's just... It's just a matter of convention. It's not that Pluto stops existing. It's just that we no longer consider it because if we did, according to our rules of what makes up or what is a planet, we'd have to add way too many. So now Pluto is actually considered, whoops, uh, maybe I'll write this in uh, black. So Pluto is now considered, 
what's called a dwarf planet. And in fact, there are lots of other ones. There's also things like, um, well, there's one called Ceres, there's one called Eris. There's even two other ones. Um, there's one actually called, uh, what is it called, Maki Maki, which is actually known as Easter Bunny for a while. And there's another one called uh, Haumea, and that one was actually called Santa. So, I mean, those are other ones that are what we call dwarf planets. So they've just been considered uh, sort of downgraded. So, so and also there's lots of other ones possibly. Now, there's all sorts of different designations if they're called plutoids or all sorts of other words. But I just wanted to focus on these main ones here. So we're going to talk about the main planets. And what I think is really interesting is the fact that a lot of the planets have their own moons. And uh, in fact, some things like asteroids, which we're going to talk about, even those have things orbiting them. So we have lots of things all in happy orbits around each other. So there's lots of these elliptical orbits going on. So in the next videos, I'm going to give you a nice little tour with light, not, lots of nice pictures of uh, things in the solar system. Now, when I say solar system, I mean things around our own sun. So I'm going to finish this video with my favorite joke. Now, I enjoy really stupid puns, so I hope you're ready for this one. My favorite joke is, yesterday I was so bright, my father called me sun. <laughs> so if I still have your attention after this, we're going to do some uh, other videos showing lots of nice pictures and talking a little bit about our solar system.